Hello, I'm Heidi Hesferich, and I'm going to talk to you today about cereal dilutions. I'm going to model cereal dilutions using beans as molecules, and then I'm going to make three different cereal dilutions and help show you how to do the calculations. And finally, I'm going to give you a challenge to try making a cereal dilution at home. If you've not already watched the video on solutions and calculating concentration, definitely watch that one before this one. And there is a handout that comes with this. You can print it right from underneath the video. And if you fill out the handout as I go through this, I think you'll get way more out of the video. At some point I read online about a method of showing cereal dilutions using beans. And I love that idea. It really helped me understand it. So I want to share that with you. So today I'm going to use black beans to represent my solute. The solute is the thing being dissolved. And I'm going to use white beans to represent my solvent. When you do a cereal dilution, you're adding half, well, sometimes we're going to do one where it's 50%. So I'm going to add 50% of my solute to an equal amount of my solvent. And I'm going to do that every time, which is why all of these cups are already half filled with solvent or the white beans. So roughly half my black beans are going into this cup. Now I started out with 500 black beans. So that was the number of beans in the initial cup. And you'll notice they're all black. So in that first space on your handout, make a note there are 500 molecules, we'll call them, and it's 100% solute. And then when we get to the second cup, I took half of them and I mixed them with solvent. So let's imagine I pipetted up and down, I mixed very well. Here is my second cup. So I started out with 500 of the molecules and I transferred half of them. So there are now 250 molecules of solvent in here. And if it's half sol solute and half solvent, it means it went from being 100% to being 50% in this cup. In a serial dilution, serial means that you are repeating it. So if you think about a TV series, it's something where there's episode after episode. So we're just going to keep doing the same thing. So in my third cup, I'm going to take half of this one, put it in the third cup, and obviously we would be measuring better in the lab, and I'm going to mix the third cup. First cup had 500 uh, molecules or beans, and the second one had 250. And then I took half of them and put them in the third cup, so the third cup had 125. The first cup was 100% concentrated, and the second cup was 50%, and then I diluted it by another 50%, and 50% times 50% is 25%. So this third cup only has 25% is as much of the solute as the first one did. And now I'm going to repeat the process with a fourth cup. By the time we get to the fourth well, these black beans are becoming harder to see. So we had 500 here. 250 made it here, 125 made it here, and half, roughly, of that made it into the fourth cup. Well, half of 125 isn't a whole number, so somewhere between 62 and 63 approximately made it in, 62.5. So we'll say around 63 beans, or 63 molecules, and then for the concentration, we went from 100% to 50% to 25%, and now half of 25 is 12.5%. So this is 12.5% concentrated. But we still have two more cups to go, so now half of this goes into the fifth one. Hard to spot any of the black beans at this point, but we went from, let's see, we went from 500 to 250 to 125 to 62.5 approximately, and half of that is 31-ish, so around 31, and we went from 100% to 50% to 25% to 12.5%, half of 12.5 is 6.25, so we're at about 6.3% now of solute to solvent, and we're going to go to the final cup. Half of our original, shake it up, and here is our final solution. So if this had about 31 of the molecules, this has half as many, so around 16 roughly, and if this had 6.25%, 
this one now has half of that, which is about 3.13%. So let's say about 3% of the solution now is solute, whereas it was 100% there. So you can see things get diluted pretty quickly in a serial dilution, even if you're doing 50%. For the second part of this video, I'm going to demonstrate a serial dilution with liquids. And in this case, I'm using green food coloring. And I don't know the exact concentration of this solution in reality, but I have put on the handout, we're gonna pretend that this is 600 micro, oops, microliters per milliliter. And a microliter is a thousandth of a milliliter. Um, so very small measurement, and we're diluting by 50% each time, just like we did with the beans. There's no tube dilution in the first one and no final dilution because we haven't diluted yet. So now we're going to go uh, and we're going to transfer half of the liquid in the first tube to the second one. I don't know if you can see, but all of my tubes are already half filled with water, so you don't have to watch me pipette water. And now I'm going to fill them the rest of the way well, just the first one, with the initial solution. So we should see it diluting. The color is decreasing just as it did with the beans. And I took this up a little past 15, about 16 roughly, so that's how far I'll go. And our second one is half as concentrated. So let's do the tube dilution first. The tube dilution is going to be one half because we transferred half it's half solute and half solvent, or half the initial uh, solution and half water that we're diluting it in. So the initial dilution is one half and the final dilution is one half because we've only done it once, which means we take half of 600. And half of 600 is 300 microliters per milliliter. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna start with the tube that's already half as concentrated because that's how you do a serial dilution. Each tube gets less concentrated. And if it's color-based, each tube will get lighter in color than the last. So this one, again, has a tube dilution of one half, but now the final dilution is this tube times this tube. And half of one half is a fourth. You just multiply the fractions. So there's two ways to do this. We can take half of 300, which is our last tube, or we can take one fourth of 600. I prefer to do it tube by tube and just take that tube's dilution, which is 50% times the last concentration. So I'll do half of 300 is 150 microliters per milliliter. But again, I could do one fourth of 600 and get the same thing. Now we start with our 150 microliters per milliliter. Dilute that 50%. Again, the tube dilution is one half, but now the final is one half times one fourth, which is one eighth. And I could do one eighth of 600 or half of 150. They're the same thing. So half of 150 is 75 microliters per milliliter. Now I'll start with this tube. Half and half of one eighth is one sixteenth and half of 75 is 37.5 microliters per milliliter. One more time and you should make this final calculation on your own because I've shown you several times now how to calculate. So do your final tube dilution, total dilution, and concentration. Pause the video if you need to. For the final step, I put the tubes of solution into the cups just to illustrate for you if this really were 100% concentrated what it looks like at a molecular level. So it's the most concentrated, and then each one 
was half as concentrated as the last. So just like in the beans, we saw the color get lighter. In the tubes, we got saw the color get lighter as well. It's representing the exact same thing, a 50% dilution with every, with every uh, dilution that we do. And that's pretty typical for a serial dilution. For the second round, we're doing things a little differently. So you're gonna to flip to the back. This time, instead of diluting 50%, we're going to dilute to one-fifth, so 20% as concentrated with each tube. And that's because not all serial dilutions are a 50% dilution every time. So I've told you that the initial concentration of this one is 1,000 nanograms per milliliter. A nanogram is a billionth of a gram, so a very small mass. And I have already added eight milliliters to each of these tubes because it's easy for me to math it then that I just need two additional because two out of 10 is 20% or one in five. So I'm going to measure out two mils and this is a calibrated pipette, so it's marked at the two line. That was a terrible shot, sorry, but trust me that was two and I measured two mils into the second tube. And now I'm gonna write down my dilution. So my tube dilution was one-fifth. I took one-fifth as much solute, or I'm sorry, as much of the initial solution, and I added it to four-fifths water. So it's one-fifth concentrated. The final dilution is also one-fifth because this is my first round, and one-fifth of 1,000 is 200. So my second tube is 200 nanograms per milliliter. Then I'm again going to take two milliliters. Maybe I can get a better shot of the calibration there. Pipette that into the third tube. Sometimes it's good to pipette up and down to mix. Again, my tube dilution is one-fifth, but now that's one-fifth of what was already one-fifth. So we multiply our fractions to get one-twenty-fifth. And you could do 1 25th of 1,000, 1,000 divided by 25, or you could just do 200 divided by 5. I prefer to do that. So uh, 200 divided by 5 is 40. So this tube has a concentration of 40 nanograms per milliliter. Oops, I should finish my unit. And if you're one of my students, I'm a stickler for units. you got to write it on each one. Then we do it again. This is the last one I'm going to do for you, and then you do the rest, one-fifth of one-twenty-fifth, you just multiply the denominators, so five times 25 is 125. So this is now one one-hundred-and-twenty-fifth as concentrated as it was back in the first tube, and one-fifth of 40 is eight. Eight nanograms per milliliter. I'll continue to dilute these samples, and you're gonna do the final two on your own. You can see by the final tube, I don't even know if I can see any, any dye um, because that one is so diluted and you hopefully have your fraction written down of how diluted it is. I almost said it on accident, but it should be in the thousands. And pause if you need a little more time, I'm gonna set up the next one. We are now gonna do our final demo with test tubes. And this time we're gonna dilute one-tenth each time, and we're going to pretend that our initial tube has a concentration of 450 grams per milliliter. I'm really just using food dye that I added, so, um, but I want us to work with this so we can practice different units. So we're going to do one-tenth instead of a half or a fifth, and this is our first tube, so it has an initial dilution of one-tenth and a final dilution of one-tenth. And I measured all these out to have nine milliliters because then I can just do one more and one out of 10 is one tenth. So that makes my math nice and easy. Again, I'm using a calibrated pipette so I can see when it gets to the one mark and then I pipette down into here. Oh, what a beautiful dye that is. Okay, now I do one tenth of 450, which is 45 grams per milliliter. And I'm only going to do two this time because you should be getting better and better. So again, I'm going to take one mil of my beautiful brown dye, pipette it over, 
Now I did a tenth, and I have to do a tenth of a tenth for the final, so it's one one hundredth. So I could take one hundredth of 450 or one tenth of 45. I'm just going to divide 45 by 10 and get 4.5 grams per milliliter. And as I do the final dilutions here, go ahead and do the math on the last three tubes. If you're in a classroom, you could check with the person next to you each time. And you almost can't see it by tube five. Maybe you can see a little bit, but by tube six, we definitely can't see the dye at all. And that's because if you do one tenth times one tenth times one tenth times one tenth times one tenth, it's actually one one hundredth as concentrated as it was. Um, so the, the lower the percent that you're transferring over, the quicker the concentration falls. 50% is going to stay much more concentrated than 10%, for example. I'm a big believer that you can't really understand something until you do it yourself. And if you're in a classroom, maybe you're doing a serial dilution this year. But I have a serial dilution activity that you can do wherever you are with whatever materials you have. So I'm going to demonstrate how I'll do it, and then I challenge you to do it at home. When you make your video, you'll need to say what your solute is. My solute is great value pulp-free orange juice, concentrated orange juice. So this is as, as concentrated as it gets. I have transferred it into this cup. <laughs> it's, it's very frozen still to make it easier. And you have to dilute at least three times. You can choose what percent you want to dilute each time. A 50% dilution is fairly standard. So that's what I'm going to do. So I want it to be 50% orange juice. And I'm just going to estimate, I'm not going to do super precise measurements, and my students can do the same. So roughly half orange juice. If you're able to take better measurements than you'd like to, you can do that. It's very important to make sure that this mixes into a homogeneous solution. It's fully mixed through, we don't have clumps anymore. And that's going to take a moment because my orange juice was so frozen. And then you have to say what percent it is now. So since this was half water and I added equal parts orange juice concentrate, it went from being 100% orange juice concentrate to 50%. And now I'm going to take 50% of my 50% and put it in here. So my next solution is 25% orange juice concentrate. And then I'm going to take that and put it in here. And my final one is 12.5% because I just cut it in half each time. Hmm, it's not very good. <laughs> okay, so I hope this helped you understand serial dilutions and make those calculations. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.